Okay, so this video we are going to try to do our first Tinkercad lab. So I've done this kind of, I've tested this with some co-op students. I've done this kind of on my own, but I haven't done this in an actual lab environment before. So we're going to see how this works. Uh, I've got high hopes for it. We'll see how it goes. So I have a classroom set up for Tinkercad. So you should have gotten an email. Uh, that gave you your these links that are like they're showing on this video screen here that show your uh, the join code and then your nickname as well uh, or the instructions for your nickname uh, so what you should be able to do is either click on this link here or this link here we're going to go through this path here which should take us directly there. So this should just launch Tinkercad, which is an online service. It runs right off their, the Autodesk website. So we'll see if this loads up here. And that code should take you to the classroom. So this is our classroom. So now it's going to ask you for your nickname. So this is where you're going to put in the nickname that was given to you. I'm putting in mine and that brings us to the screen here so I am now logged in this should be my uh, profile up here now what you're going to want to do when you get in here first thing you can do change your uh, your nickname so if you go under profile you should be able to go here and change what your nickname is okay so give that a try change that and then save it you can put a picture in there yourself if you want but that should be you for the uh for your profile now what we're going to do there's lots of things you can do in here you can do 3d modeling in here you can do circuits you can do code blocks and stuff like that what we are going to do we're going to do circuits and then we're going to say create a new circuit so whatever you create in here can be seen by the teachers okay so uh, we'll be able to look at these and then you're going to do a couple labs in here and then actually some you're going to basically whatever you save in here we're going to look at and verify you actually did the lab uh, so that will be the purpose here so for this lab what we are going to do this is lab number two it is online right now so if you open it up on if you open this up you will see this is lab 2 the basic logic and trainer setup this is the lab that is on blackboard right now uh, there is also a great video on youtube for this so the link for the video is there as well to actually do this in the actual breadboard version of it so what this lab does is basically get you familiar with the breadboard and get you to actually turn on some LEDs. Okay, so this is basically what we're going to do. It's got several parts to it. As you go along through this as well, if you want to record your results, you will in the end key in these results to an online lab document uh, that is under the assignments for this week as well. So that will be one of your that will be your assignment for this week. So what we're going to do is learn about how the breadboard works. So this here is the breadboard. And we're going to use several different components on there. So let's get started with this. I'm just going to minimize that for now. So the first thing we're going to do, let's this is our working environment here. So let's see how this works. So I'm going to go to the components on the side over here. On the right hand side now we have a couple different versions of this this is the basic components we can change this to see all of them as well and this has a much larger bank of components that we can use we can use the potato battery if we want so what we need to do is we're going to put in a breadboard so let's look at the boards there's a couple different sizes of them 
we'll just use the small one for now. So we'll take the small. So let's put this in here. So that is our board. And let's talk about what the breadboard is. So this is basically a bunch of little holes that are, some of them are connected together, some of them are not. So if you look up here, this top line, if I put my cursor on there, you see they'll all light up together. Those are all internally connected. So basically plugging a wire into one of these holes and then plugging a wire into another one of these holes means that those two wires are connected together or those two components are connected together. You'll see that is the same for this line here, this line at the bottom here, and this line at the bottom here. So those are all internally connected, as are these ones. They're not connected to these ones. It's nice on the board here because these actually light up and show you what is connected to what. And then you'll also see here when we have rows 1 through 30 here, A, B, C, D, and E are also all connected together. So those five pins are all connected together there, and these five are connected together. Okay, and you can see basically how that lays out. So if I plug something into here, and I plug something into here, they are connected together. All right, so let's start laying some things out on here. So the first thing we're going to do Anytime you just touch something here, it will draw a wire. And then when you end a wire, it's connecting. So this is now drawing a wire from this line, this row here, down to this row here. So that is basically connecting these together. So this one here, we're going to call this the negative bus, and this one here also the negative bus. So I'm just going to delete that for now. It's how you can see that is a negative, and this is a plus. This is a negative, and this is a plus. We are going to use those as basically our main sources of power. So the first thing we want to do is let's actually connect power to those points, and then we'll distribute everything else from there. So there's two different power sources we could use for this. We could use batteries like you are going to use in your uh, test in your kit that you'll have at home. Maybe that's what we'll do this week. We could use a power supply as well. But I think this week we'll use a battery for this lab. So we're going to put a battery in here. And this single battery, that is 1.5 volts. And we're actually going to use a battery pack that has four batteries all together. So we'll do this. So that is our four battery pack. So four times 1.5 gives us six. Let's do that. That actually looks exactly like the uh, thing that comes in your kit. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to take this. Now what I'm going to actually do, while I'm going to click on this, this icon on the very left-hand side here, the rotate, I'm going to do this, spin this around, just so it's easier to use. I'll put this off to the side up here. And you see when I touch this, that says positive, this says negative. So I want to touch, connect the positive to this bus here, and connect the negative to this bus here. Now the one thing we're going to do first, before we do that, we're going to add in some diodes. So this one here that's called diode, not the Zener diode, but just the diode, we're going to add in one of these. Let's put it off in space here. Then I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to do a Control c and then Control v to copy and paste. It's going to bring in a second one, or you could always just grab a second one and bring it in like that if you wanted. Now what a diode does, it restricts the flow of current to one direction only. So it basically means that you can't wire things backwards. So the way this goes, power is going to go in through the dark end, 
and leave through the silver striped end. All right, this is the lesson for week number two. That's my first video, finished compiling. So what we're gonna do is let's spin these around. So we're gonna have one that does this. This is actually gonna go for the positive bus. This one will make go for the negative bus. I'll spin this around as well. So remember, power goes from positive into the black side, out through the silver stripe side, and into the positive there. Doesn't matter what your wires look like, as long as they start and end at the right places. So I'm basically doing that. So what that should now do is put five or six volts coming out of here onto my positive and negative bus up here. And what I'm going to do, just to make things easier, we're going to say all of our positive wires, we're going to make them red. So I'm just going to change the color of this to red, just so I can kind of tell what's going on. And I'm going to make my negative wires black. So there. So we're going to do that. And now, if I start my simulation up here, I can say start simulation. And I can turn this thing on. I would now have power there, but I can't really tell because I have no other components on here. So let's do something else here. Let's put, scroll down here. I'm going to grab a multimeter, this thing here. I'm just going to use this to determine where I have power and where I don't. So the negative, let's just connect that to the negative bus. The positive, let's connect that to the positive bus. Just to be consistent, let's make that black or red. Now what we're going to see here, let's start this up, is we see that we get about five and a half volts on this bus here. So between the positive and the negative, we read about five and a half volts coming from this supply right now. And that should be about six volts. What you will see is you'll get a little bit of a voltage drop because of these diodes but we will get about five and a half or five volts as a working voltage that we'll be able to work our circuits with. Okay, so that is setting up the very first basic part of this board. Next thing we wanna do, if we wanna use these buses down here, which we will, they're not connected to anything right now. So if we want this to be a negative bus, we wanna actually connect it to this negative bus. So let's draw another wire. Just out here. Make that one negative. Draw another wire here. Make that one positive. So let's just color code these so we can tell what they are. Keep all of our black and red wires organized. So now this bus here, that should be uh, five volts across there as well. Okay, so that is the beginning of our setup. Let's try to add some stuff here. So, the lab, it says what we want to do here, we are going to try to add an LED. So part one of the lab, construct a circuit on the right. Uh, test your circuit by applying power to the breadboard and record results in your truth table below. So basically we're looking for what is the truth table of the LED, is it on or off, when we basically take between five volts. We have five volts going to the positive of the LED. This is the LED symbol here. So we're gonna use a red LED then we go through a 330 ohm resistor and then to the ground or our negative voltage. So that is the circuit we're going to build. 
Let's grab our components here. So we need a resistor, pull one of these in, and we need an LED, pull one of these in. So the LED, you can change the color of it, whatever you want. We're just going to be red for now. The resistor, we can change the value of it. So we are going to be in ohms, 330 ohms. And you'll notice when I do this, the color code on that resistor actually changes. So resistors, you can tell what their value is by the colors on them. So this says orange, orange, brown, gold. That indicates a 330 ohm resistor. So there is a chart that tells you the values of resistors. I'm not expecting you to know that chart, but know that that is the color code for this resistor. So we need to go, it's basically the way a breadboard works. We mount our components in here, so we push this in. And we take this guy, and this had to go from, so the way this wired, we went from the positive to the positive side of the LED. So 5 volts goes from here in through the LED in through the anode, out through the cathode, and then from here we have to connect to the negative bus. So we want to put this right here. So that connects the cathode of the LED to the negative bus. So this should be our very first circuit. And then when we turn this on, we get our LED to come on. So you can see that. And we can actually turn this guy on and off. And you'll see that as I click the power supply on and off, the LED goes on and off. Okay, so that is our first circuit. So with power on, we are demonstrating basically 5 volts through the LED, through the resistor, to our ground or 0 volts. That gives us an LED on. So we would write on in here. Or when we answer the question, we would say this truth table should be on. So the next one, construct the circuit on the right by removing the wire from the anode, to the LED, to the 5 volt and replacing it with a long 4 inch wire and then test your circuit by placing it in the 5 volt then the 0 volt and then an unused bus on the breadboard fill in this below. So what that is asking us to do is basically first of all test this circuit. You can see when we plug into 5 volts that is on. Now it's asking us take this wire plug it into the negative so we're going to plug it in here, and now test what happens. So now we are going from 0 volts in through the LED, back out again, and back to 0 volts. What happens? Let's test it. We get no light. Okay, because basically there's no voltage across the LED, you don't get any light. Let's try this again. It's saying go to an unused point on the board. So let's just plug it in here. Start it again, we also get no light. Okay, and then go back to the 5 volt there, so 5 volts in, and that one gives us a light. So, what we would want to answer here. 5 volts, that would be on, 0 volts is off, unused is off. Part C, we're going to change this circuit around a little bit. We're actually going to do a green LED now, and we're going to go from 5 volts through the resistor, 
through the green LED to the zero volts. And then this wire here, we're going to move around and we're going to test between 5 volts, 0 volts, and the unused. So let's create that circuit. So we're going to have an LED, a resistor. This LED is going to be green. This is going to be, again, 330 ohms. And we wanted to go from 5 volts into the anode of the LED, and then a wire. And this wire is going to go. First of all, we're going to try the 5 volt connection. Let's make this wire purple. So let's try this one here first. 5 volt connection. Let's try that. We get no LED on. And it says try this plugged into the 0 volt. So look at this now. We now have we now have five volts through resistor through here out to the zero volts. That should be five volts across. What's going to happen? That actually gives us an LED on. And now we're going to try this one, unused bus. Let's plug it in over here. That also gives us no light. So for this case, this one gives us a light only on zero volts, the true zero volts there. So that would be part C completed. Part D is asking us to make this circuit here, which is a combination of these two things with a test wire in the middle. So we're going to move this around a little bit. So it's saying, get rid of that. Why don't we put this guy here? this guy here. So we're now going 5 volts through the resistor into the green, out of the green, into the red, through the red, and back to the zero. And we have in the middle of this we have you can see that is plugged into the middle there. Let's test these three combinations. So plugged into the 5 volt power, you get red light. Plugged into the 0 volt power, that gives us green light. Plugged into The unused bus, that gives us interesting. That gives us a dim version of each. So let's compare that. It looks like those are on but dim. Compare that to this. That's brighter. See how bright that is compared to 
this. Compared to this, sorry. So not as bright. Because basically what you're doing in this case is you're splitting the voltage between the two LEDs. So you're not getting a true 5 volt signal on either of them. So in the one case, you're getting 5 volts completely on the red, nothing on the green. The other one, you're getting 5 volts on the green, nothing on the red. In this case, you're kind of getting 2.5 volts on either LED. And one thing we will notice, the more uh, voltage you put on the LEDs, the brighter they get. Okay, so that would be that would be part D of the lab completed. Now the final part we're going to do is part E, and this is asking us to use the DIP switch. DIP stands for dual inline package and the SIP resistor. SIP stands for single inline package. Now with, uh, one thing we're going to find here, with Tinkercad, we do not have a SIP resistor, so we're going to have to use individual 4.7 kilo ohm resistors instead, which is the way that these are drawn anyway, so that's okay for us. But we're basically going to I'm just reading this here. So we're basically going to leave this intact. We're going to add these in. So let's grab the dip switch. So we're just going to grab, we'll grab the six position dip switch. So the dip switch is funny because it basically spans right across the middle here. So when you place this, the bottom terminals of the switch are connected to these terminals now. The top terminals are connected to these terminals. And if we look at the way this diagram goes, we go 5 volts through a 4 kilo ohm resistor through a switch to ground. So basically, switch, one side of the switch connects to ground. So we need whatever switches we're going to use. We always need to do this. We're going to put in little ground wires here on all these switches. And just to be consistent, I'm going to make all these black to indicate that they touch negative zero volts or ground as we'll call it and now we're going to put in resistors 4.7 kilo ohm resistors so kilo ohms 4.7 and you'll see that is red purple yellow gold now we're going to bring this between the red bus up here and the individual switches. So there's one there. I'm going to copy and paste this. Bring in a second one. Put a second one right here. And now what we're going to do is take this wire, move it onto switch number one. Okay, just to wrap up this lab. Uh, had a couple of difficulties here, but I think we're all set now. Uh, so this is our lab setup. I'm going to start the simulation here. And I have, I, you can see over here, I have a multimeter connected to, I have the negative lead connected to our negative bus. That's what we have to do to measure voltage. Got our positive lead, which is where we're going to measure. I have that connected to our actual signal wire that goes over from the switch over to where these LEDs are. So you can see in the up position, which is basically opening the circuit, 
uh, you can see I get a zero volt signal here. So this is a logic zero signal. So at logic zero, you can see I get the green light very bright, the red light uh, completely dark. So completely off on the green, on the red light, completely on or very bright on the green light. So that is a logic zero signal. Now let's flip this switch the other way. This is our logic one signal. And you can see I'm actually reading about two and a half volts here. So it's a logic one, but it's kind of in the middle on the voltage. It's not a five volt signal. And as a result of that, you can see I have both of these LEDs kind of partially on. So I would describe this as LEDs are both on right now, but they're also very dim as well. And this is very evident when we do this lab with actual live LEDs. You'll see you have to actually look at them in the right angle to actually see that they're on. Uh, this always confused people in the lab that they some people would say they're on, some people would say they're off, depending on just how you're looking at them. So this is our logic one situation. Now, what we will find is when we're actually doing this with the chips, like we see next week, this is enough of a signal to actually trigger a logic one. Uh, but here, what you get is kind of a weird, kind of ambig ambiguous signal that's kind of partway in between. So it's not a five volt signal, it's a two and a half volt signal, and you kind of get both lights kind of half on. So that is our logic one condition. So that is with this switch in the down position. Now I'm going to show you two more things before we wrap this lab up. This should be enough to do all the questions right now in the lab. I'm going to show you two more things here. Just for your own information. First one, I'm just going to replicate this circuit here. So I'm going to take an LED and wire this just straight to our 5 volt power. Make that a red wire so we can tell it's 5 volt power. Let's run this. So you'll see that's a bright red. That's a dim red. So that's a true 5 volt signal on there. Uh, that's what a bright red looks like. Now, one of the things that always happens in this lab, people always blow up their LEDs. The reason they do that if you don't put this resistor in there. So let's just take that out and let's just connect this directly to that bus there. So this is basically just five volts straight through the straight across the LED with no resistance in series with it. Let's see what happens there when we simulate it. We get this. And if we hover on that it says current through the LED is 3.18 milliamps, while absolute maximum is 20 milliamps. So this happens a lot in the lab when we actually build these on breadboards. People forget to put in the resistors, and this happens just like that. They pop that LED, and then the LED doesn't work anymore. So they end up having LEDs that don't work, and then they're trying to build their circuits and can't figure out why things don't work. It's because they burned up their LEDs and don't even realize it. So that happens quite a bit. The other thing that happens a lot with LEDs, let's we'll put that back in here. You can see again that's working. If you take this LED and rotate it, spin it around, oh. so that LED is mounted backwards. Okay, so we have cathode here, anode here. This is mounted backwards. One of the things that we do with LE, with diodes is they only allow current flow in one direction. So an LED that is mounted backwards will not light up. Okay, they'll only light up if you put them in the correct direction. Okay, so we can do this. I can put one in here in the right direction. And you'll see this one works, this one doesn't. They're both connected to the same connection points, but this one is mounted in the correct orientation. This one is in the reverse orientation. It does not work.
Okay, so that's about it for our lab for this week. So what you should be doing at this point, your lab should look like, I'm just going to remove this. It should look like this. And what you're going to do now, right up here at the top left corner, you are going to put in your name, student number, and lab number two. So I'm going to put in my name. So I put in Al Douglas, my student number, week two lab. And once you do that, this is now saved. If I hit on this little Tinkercad symbol here, it goes back. This is now stored under my circuits. And now this can be viewed by the teachers and they can grade this for you. Okay, so that is it for the Tinkercad lab. So give this a try. Good luck. We'll see how it goes. Thank you.